to the May 28th, 2024 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. If the city clerk could please take the roll. Nichols? Here. Larson? Here. Esslinger? Here. Flom? Here. Bulo? Here. Uh, Stevenson is absent excused. Muauer? Here. Present six. Uh, leading us in the invocation tonight will be Council Member Nichols. We come together this evening to discuss the issues that confront our city. May we always seek the wisdom to do things that reflect our concern for the people whom we represent. And this evening we have two students from South Park Middle School here. Uh, would Alina and Gabby come on up and join me? Um, so thank you again for coming and helping lead us in the pledge this evening. Uh, I think it's one of the last times we'll have students here for the school year, and then we'll kick it back off in the, in the fall. So thank you for being here. We have Gabby and we have uh, Elena from uh, South Park Middle School. Um, if you don't mind, maybe tell us uh, what grade you're in. Uh, I know you're from South Park. And then uh, favorite class, favorite subject, or a, a favorite teacher you want to give a shout out to. Um, we're both in seventh grade. And uh, I think both of our favorite teachers are Anne Larson, right? Mm -hmm. And she's our science teacher. Is there anything else you want to say? Mr. Mm -hmm. Schoenbach's also awesome. <laughs> well, very nicely done. Thank you for coming this evening. Next up, we have a couple presentations this evening. First off, we have the 2024 Acanthus Awards. This is in partnership with the Landmarks Commission here in the city of Oshkosh. And uh, former council member Shirley Brabender Maddox is here to help, help us with that. Um, first up, we have the Beer Blog and Lee Ryherzer. Welcome, Shirley. Good evening. For over 40 years, the Landmarks Commission recommends nominations for people from, um, who have affected the support of historic preservation and the history of Oshkosh, and the mayor presents the awards. So we're doing that this evening in May at the end of Historic Preservation Month. Where's Lee? Come on down, Lee. The first award is to Lee Ryharzer for researching and writing about the ongoing history of Oshkosh breweries in his Oshkosh beer blog, from small brew houses to large commercial factories, and telling the stories of the people, the neighborhoods, and their connection to the history of Oshkosh. It is fitting that we honor Lee Ryharzer this year as Oshkosh celebrates the 175th anniversary of the beer brewing industry in Oshkosh, which began before Oshkosh was a city. Since 1849, there have been 21 breweries established in Oshkosh. We acknowledge Lee's contribution to Oshkosh history through his blog of hundreds of articles, which he began writing in 2010, telling the history of beer, breweries, and saloons in Oshkosh. Not only does he narrate the stories, but he does include visuals and photos of long ago buildings and people from every neighborhood. He has published three books, co-authoring one with Ron Aiken about the breweries of Oshkosh. Lee's research includes years of trips to the Register of Deeds office, searching land records and agreements, census records, court cases, death notices, and newspapers. 
and he pours over the resources of the local archives at the public museum and the library. Another of Lee's great resources is meeting the descendants of early families, often immigrants who were connected to the brewing industry, and hearing their stories. Lee is a storyteller who connects the lives of everyday people, many who would be forgotten, but for Lee's telling of their part in the story about bearing, brewing beer in Oshkosh. We are grateful to Lee for his contribution as a researcher and writer who keeps alive the history of an industry that influenced the lives and economy of our city <coughs> and continues even into the 21st century. Congratulations, Lee. Uh, to, uh, presented to Lee Reiharzer for research documenting the history of beer brewing industry in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Winnebago County. Okay, well, I mean, to me, this is a when Shirley when, when Shirley told me about this, it was a kind of a total shock because, you know, I'm writing about this tier of culture here that a lot of cities probably wouldn't be wanting to celebrate. I mean, I never read about brewers and saloon keepers and, and bootleggers. Uh, but you know, Oshkosh has always been a little bit different that way, so maybe that's part of what makes us good here. But thank you very much, I appreciate it. Congratulations. The second Acanthus Award is presented to Alliance Development for Sco Smith School Lofts. Andy Dumke and Cal Schultz. And Cal, would you come down to accept the award? We acknowledge Andy Dumke and Cal Schultz for restoring and preserving this historic neighborhood school, creating 31 apartments, unique ones, and providing affordable housing. Smith School, 1745 Oregon <laughs> Street, opened in 1896. This Romanesque revival style building is a testament to the work of two renowned Oshkosh architects, William Waters and Henry Owler. The two-story building is easily identified with William's signature round arched doorway and multiple round arched window openings. The building was listed on the State and National Register of Historic Places in 2021. After a consultant study revealed that over $3 million was needed to replace the roof and tend to the repairs, the school board closed Smith School in 2019 and sold it to developers, Andy Dunkey and Cal Schultz, and uh, the present owners with former partners Chet Wiesenberg and Tim House. The owners worked with the State Historic Preservation Office to repair and preserve the historic elements in designing 31 apartments for a healthy environment, including large rooms with tall windows for natural light and fresh air. The original hardwood floors in the classrooms and terrazzo floors in the hallways were restored to their original luster. Wood doors, built-in cabinets, chalkboards, and bulletin boards were utilized throughout the apartments. The brick panels and alcoves along the hallways were retained to provide protection for the walls. The magnificent entryway with terrazzo stairs extends to two floors and they will last another hundred years. The Landmarks Commission applauds the owners for the adaptive reuse of Smith School made possible by their vision and resources. They saved an historic building that has been at the heart of this South Side neighborhood where generations of families were educated for 124 years. Congratulations, Shell. On behalf of the City of Oshkosh and the Landmarks Commission, we are pleased to recognize the contribution of Alliance Development uh, for the adaptive reuse and preservation of the historic Smith School lofts. And uh, it's a very cool project, by the way. So thank you for doing it and uh, for the, uh, the preservation of that building. Thank you.
안녕하세요. 
Uh, next up, we have a presentation by Community Development Director Kelly Nyforth and Planning Services Mark uh, Manager Mark Lyons on the downtown visual uh, visualization. The floor is yours. Thanks for having us back for another presentation. <laughs> Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about the downtown redevelopment visualization. Uh, this has been in the works for about a year and a half. Uh, city in conjunction with uh, BID, Chamber, GoEDC, um, Discover, Oshkosh have all been working on this uh, plan. Um, so I want to give you kind of an overview of tonight where we're at. I'm um, just kind of starting with a reminder of, of you know where Oshkosh started especially along our riverfront in the downtown area, it was a largely industrial area uh, for a significant amount of time um, that began to slowly start to redevelop. Just a couple of images kind of showing, you know, here, here's where we started as this city. Um, <clears throat> so this is a collaboration project, as I mentioned, with a number of organizations, and this has been a common practice of the city, um, partnering with our other community partners to bring these plans together. Uh, similarly, it was done with Downtown Action Plan, Imagine Oshkosh, uh, Oshkosh on the Fox, Sawdust District. So this is a, an activity we current, uh, currently do quite a bit of where we collaborate with those organizations. Um, just dive in a little bit more to some of the more recent plans. So um, 2000 was kind of the kickoff of really starting to look at what redevelopment in downtown um, Oshkosh was going to look like. So we're about you know, almost 25 years coming up on that first um, action plan of trying to transform our downtown. And really largely that had been implemented. Um, that was the Leech Amphitheater. Um, it was our river walk. Mark's going to talk about it. Um, but it really is um, you know, a joint partnership with a lot of our community f um, partners such as the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation um, that we all come together to, to you know, see what we can do together to implement these larger projects. Yeah. Um, so again, 2020 was that first plan. Um, the city, the community foundation, the chamber partnered on that one. As you can see, there's quite a bit of a gap then before we did something again, and that's largely because we were getting the implementation of that action plan. Then in 2016, we started the Imagine Oshkosh plan. Um, that was the new center city plan they were working on at that time. Obviously, we've been working on implementation of that one since then. Um, 2018 to 2020, we worked on the Sawdust District Master Plan, so moving to the south side of the river a little bit. And now we're kind of circling back around to largely the north side of the river and saying, okay, we did a lot of the stuff in that, 20, that 2000 action plan. Now let's start to look forward. What's next for the city and its downtown redevelopment? So again, as I said, this is a partnership between the city, the community foundation, the chamber, Go EDC, Discover Oshkosh, the downtown bid. And something we really wanted to achieve with what we're going to share with you today is um, when we did the Imagine Oshkosh plan here, um, it has some visuals, um, but it's a lot of kind of doing a code audit um, of our zoning code of how we can facilitate growth in our central city. Um, so we've used it quite a bit, um, but something unique that was done uh, in 2000 is they made, they had visuals here. And visuals will always help people. It helps people see what, you know, could become in a certain area. So that's what we're trying to achieve, what we're, what we're going to share with you today. Yeah, so just we wanted to give you some highlights of some of the significant dates in the center city, kind of starting back to that 2000 action plan. And you can see a lot of these things that happen with the Leech and North Main Street, Imagine Oshkosh, the Arena, Sawdust District. Now we're moving in more recent times with uh, the redevelopment theater, Karen Freighter. Um, just some quick highlights. So here are a lot of the things that got done in the 2000 action plan, and there's a lot more than this, but these are all things that were specifically called out in that plan for the city to work on that we have done. The river walk started in 2010 until present. We're still working on river walk projects today. A redevelopment of the 100 North Main block. The Leach Amphitheater 2004. Mary and Pearl redevelopment area, which is nearly finally complete after almost 25 years of redevelopment in that area. Um, Jefferson and Parkway. Um, as I hope you guys saw last week, we, uh, the corridor project was awarded tax credit, so that project will be moving forward this year. That's an exciting new project. But that was called out in the action plan as some, an area that needed redevelopment. Opera House Square and then the former Morgan Door site were all in that plan specifically. So just we have some images kind of show you of kind of a lot of those projects and what it looked like before and after. We'll try to get through these relatively quickly. Obviously, Opera House Square redevelopment area, what was there before and after the redevelopment. Um, Leach Amphitheater, what obviously that site looked like historically before the redevelopment of that site. Uh, 100 North Main Building, and seeing how that redevelopment took place. Um, 
This is the Mary and Pearl redevelopment area when it was all still industrial development. There's what we have now today with Brio and Max and Corners, Anthem and Annex, and all of those redevelopments that have taken place in the meantime. Um, then we have obviously, you know, what Jeldwin Door looked like. Even this photo, the buildings on the corner of Sixth Avenue, Oregon, were already down, and there was still a lot more that eventually, obviously, had to come down. First, you know, what's under construction right now with the um, Freight at Theta Care Hospital, Riverwalk. You know, that was a big part of that tw that 2000 action plan, and the amount of progress the city has made on implementation of the Riverwalk. There's still a lot to go as we get to that southeast side, Pioneer Island, Pioneer Drive, but we've made substantial investments in that as a community. Just some <laughs> images for you, kind of a lot of the work that's taken place with the Riverwalk. As I mentioned, the corridor project, which has now received funding and is moving forward, helping finish the redevelopment in that area. And then now kind of getting into what, what's new. So. Uh, we're going to share some of the images for this redevelopment plan. Again, as Kelly said, it's really intended to be a visualization to show large-scale pictures of what could happen downtown. And the plan is broken into a couple of different categories of the types of uh, projects and, and things that the city could do. Um, here's kind of the scope of the project area we looked at, um, encompassing uh, Main Street, um, Jackson Street, kind of the, the overall area all the way over to you know, the Leach on the southeast side. So as I said here, we looked at a number of different types of <coughs> redevelopment opportunities. Those ranging <coughs> from more simple um, landscaping improvements, maybe sites that had a lot of hardscaping that could use some landscaping improvements to better visualize what was downtown, um, to redevelopment opportunities, and then truly catalyst sites. Where could large scale impactful <coughs> redevelopment take place in the downtown area? And it's helpful for staff to break these down um, so we can you know work with you during CIP working with strategic planning to see what you know initiatives you want to pursue and you know what are maybe some low-hanging fruit and what are some you know projects and initiatives that we maybe need to plan for in the longer term so we wanted to give you a couple um, highlights out of the plan there's a lot more in there we'll be sharing the full plan with you um, as a reminder this was kind of that group's effort and that group's vision it's not just staff but it's all the community partners that were involved in this process as well as the stakeholder interviews that took place during it it's probably about 50 stakeholders that were interviewed during this process and then of course the city the chamber of commerce oshkosh community foundation the downtown bid discover oshkosh and go edc uh, so first is uh, kind of expansion of Opera House Square. Um, when Discover Oshkosh did the Roger Brooks study, one of the elements that was um, highlighted in that is the potential for that downtown plaza, that active space in the downtown, and what could that look like? This visualization started to give that shape. What could a downtown plaza look like? So it's expansion of Opera House Square by acquiring additional two blocks in the area closing of High Street and really going to a larger <coughs> scale downtown plaza. And the idea was to have more programming downtown. Um, Opera House Square is great, we have a lot of programming, but how can we offer more program, more passive program, not just event-based? Um, so you see there are some just kind of different ideas there on the uh, right side. and. Um, this is just the vision right now, as Marcus said, and we're going to keep saying that. Um, this could change, um, but this is something, you know, looking at opportunities, you know, that we could explore further in our downtown. Yeah, ultimately, this would not have to be the location of a downtown plaza, but we wanted to explore what could one look like in this area. Um, another large one that is shown, uh, it does talk about city center and how there's a number of opportunities and ways that redevelopment in city center could take place. Um, all the way from maintaining the current building and helping revitalize what's there today. Versus option two, you could look at removal of portions of the building and splitting it up and adding some redevelopment and keeping some of the old building. All the way then option three, which is what the image on the top right shows is, you could look at full scale redevelopment of that area. I'm going to more mixed use, commercial, office, residential, full redevelopment, bringing the sight line of the street down or some, you know, one of the things we've heard occasionally is it's hard to see from the river into downtown. So how could you improve that sight line and kind of incorporate that right into downtown? I, I mean, this could be a potentially large catalyst project, but it would take a lot of insight and effort to make something like this happen. But then understanding there's multiple ways that redevelopment of that area could take place. And this site is 
so large and we wanted to have different options looking at it and um, I know for example you know there's different types of uses that are being proposed for it I think Mark you just had a workshop was it with Plan Commission last week for um, they're looking at doing indoor storage so Plan Commission is considering that so as we are looking at redeveloping and investing in our downtown you know we need to make sure all of our ideas are aligning with what's being approved and what we want to see long term too and then um, kind of finally looking at some of the smaller scale type of projects that are included in the plan with landscaping improvements. Uh, for example, the 300 and 600 North Main Street blocks uh, where there's a lot of hardscape today and very little green space and landscaping. How could we improve the visual areas by just adding some landscaping, making them a little more inviting? And then uh, there are some other opportunities identified in the plan for redevelopment. Uh, two examples we have here is obviously, as a lot of people know, uh, the town motel block and what could redevelopment of that entire block look like. Um, going to more of a mixed use style of developments, um, adding housing, adding some rooftop units to the downtown. And the one that's a little bit unique is the North Main public gathering space right now that is a small city parking lot that exists between those two buildings. Uh, many of you may be familiar with kind of that mural that's on the north side there, or excuse me, the south side of the plaza there. And just looking at could we go to a small public gathering area where maybe that little bit of parking lot is removed in green space and, and just more of inviting space could be added within an already city owned parking lot. So kind of next steps. Um, this is the first presentation made to the public as part of this plan. Obviously the city and all of our partners will be going to their individual boards presenting on this plan, starting to gain feedback of what do the different um, bodies and boards who were participating in this think of the plan. What are some, um, as we talk about um, short and long term priorities, what are things in the plan that council likes, these areas, boards and organizations that were included in it, what do they think of the plan? What would they like to see us move forward on investigating first? Um, and then really establishing some opportunities of, you know, what's the city's roles? What are our private partnership participation? What does that look like for trying to bring some of these projects potentially forward? So certainly this is not the last you're going to hear of it. Um, this is just us showing you, uh, you know, what the plan is having now. And I won't even call it a plan. I call it a visualization. We in fully anticipate that some of the aspects of this will change. Uh, but we want you to be aware that it's something that we are looking into uh, with our community partners. And we'll most likely be coming back with you um, in the future to talk about, you know, what their thoughts might be and maybe some priorities that might be, you know, bubbling up that we should look to go after. And we will be sharing the full plan with you now, now that we have that final document as well. But I do want one more slide for you, and it's just to talk about we're already doing things in downtown. It's great that this plan is coming together and being put forward, but there's already two relatively exciting projects going on at the downtown. Um, many of you are familiar with the Williams Water Gazebo project that we've talked about for years. Um, that is finally going to be constructed this summer. So that will finally be coming to permission that gazebo will be added at that location. And then the alley activation that the bid has been working heavily on with beautifying that alley. There's a lot of great murals and public art and stuff out there now. So we're already working on that investment in downtown. These were just some of the early steps as now we move forward with this potential larger plan. Thank you. So with that, if there's any questions that anybody might have, like I said, today was just more sharing this information with you. Uh, we'll be coming back to you in the future, but if you do have any immediate questions, we can certainly um, try to answer them. Doesn't look like any questions. Just a, um, I want to say thank you for the visualizations. Uh, uh, I came on just after Imagine Oshkosh was uh, worked on and I think approved. But you're right, you know, there's a lot of data, a lot of information in there, a lot of ideas and concepts. It's good to put, you know, uh, a lot of people are visual people. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's also good to just, you know, it's a touch point on that. It's been almost, what, seven years, eight mm -hmm. years since it was worked on. So appreciate the efforts. And as you mentioned, uh, it's not the last we'll see of this. So Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up we have citizen statements to council. A uh, reminder, citizens are to address council only. <coughs> statements are limited to five minutes. They must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda. They are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh and the common council may address at a future meeting and must not in include uh, any endorsements of any political candidates or other electioneering. And if you require more time, just let me know and we'll do our best to accommodate. Uh, first up, we have uh, state representative Lori Palmieri. Welcome. 
Thank you, Mayor and Council. It's so strange for me to be on this side of the dais, but I'm going to be pretty brief here tonight. Um, uh, my name's Lori Palmieri. I'm at 212 West Parkway Avenue here in Oshkosh. And, um, as a state representative, I am here to give a little bit of a public service announcement uh, regarding maps and districts affecting uh, residents here in the city of Oshkosh. Um, at the, a prior meeting, um, one of my colleagues uh, stated that he was now representing a, a portion of the city of Oshkosh. And I just wanted to supplement that information. Um, and we've got a couple of um, visuals to show uh, some former, uh, let's see here. Oh, he's got it up there. Oh, there we go. Uh, so what you're looking at right now is um, the 2022 54th Assembly District. And you'll kind of notice, for those of you who are familiar with the shoreline geography, um, it dips down on the south side just a little <coughs> bit south of like Stony Beach. And then up on the north side, it's kind of dog leg and skips and hops around. But um, if we pop over to um, the new maps um, for Assembly District 54, there we go. Um, looks a little bit uh, like a small Texas. Um, and uh, that is quite a change, right? Um, you no longer see that um, southern, uh, I would say one third of the city, and this is going to remain District 54. Uh, the number does not change for us. However, if you live, for example, in that southern, and I'm just gonna use Stony Beach because it's a landmark that, that is familiar to a lot of people. Um, that is actually gonna be part of the new 55th Assembly District which is the old 53rd, but um, that's for other representatives to discuss. I just want to point out that um, we do extend further north and uh, a little bit further west out towards Butamore. Um, so as far as constituent services goes, I am continuing to represent the 54th Assembly District very clearly until the end of this year, first week of January. So constituent <coughs> services will continue to be offered. I'm going to put up um, a website and a phone number here at the end if you have any questions about where you are. Um, for folks who are on the edges, similarly, up on the north side, you may have previously been in the 53rd Representative Shraz area and now uh, in the 54th. So it's a little bit unclear, but when you go to the state website, um, you can actually uh, choose Find My Legislators. And I'm going to put this website um, address up here, too. Uh, yeah. Yep. yep. Um, so it's legis.wisconsin.gov. And then um, there is a little uh, tab here. You can choose Who Are My Legislators. And what you'll do is enter your address. Then you have several options. You can look at the view of who your current legislator is, actually at the top, uh, serving until January 7th. And the one below that is, it says who is your current legislator. <coughs> now, that is based on census tracts. Um, and there's some question about when that actually begins. So for now, be assured, I continue to represent the 2022 folks until the end, and we are starting to venture out into um, the 2024. At the very bottom, <coughs> note that when you've entered your address at the top and click search, you can also see at the bottom who resides in your district, okay? And um, that's based on the new maps. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our office or to uh, your representative's office about constituent services. Um, I do want to just jump over to the, the regional maps real quick and show a little distinction between 2022 and 2024. So the Fox Valley region, let's see here. So this is 2022 and you can see Oshkosh, most of the city there is 54 and 53 surrounds it. Okay, 55 is to the north, 
But then if you fast forward to the um, 2024 one, uh, regional one, I'm sorry. There you yeah, can that's see it. 54 remains most of the city of Oshkosh, but then what used to be the 53rd is now the 55th, and the 53rd actually is to the north of us. So I just wanted to point that out because it has been a bit confusing. If you have any questions or are uncertain, please either reach out to our office or to um, another legislator's office to um, clarify constituent services for the rest of this year. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I think the uh, <clears throat> former mayor and current assemblywoman Paul Mary makes a good point there. A reminder: if you have questions, you know, c concerning state uh, services, I'm confident if you reach out to any one of their offices and it happens to be the wrong representative, they're going to easily help connect you with the right one. And and uh, I've had nothing but good interactions with her office as well as the other representatives that currently and and, and in the past. Um, um, so if you need anything, just reach out, and they're they are always happy to help. So. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, looks like Brian Seal. Welcome. And then followed by Michael Patton. I have two things I'd like to address the council about. Um, first would be the delay of ARPA funds. When we speak of homelessness, preventive homelessness, affordable housing, underrepresented populations, it should be understood that these funds are needed immediately. Um, my application addressed the needs for employment, affordable housing, and underrepresented populations. I myself am currently in need of affordable housing options. The ARPA application I filed was under Mariah's Garden and Some Children's Studios. A large portion of my experience um, is in the field of art, construction, manufacturing, and transportation. I've worked my whole life. Oshkosh has a lot of talent that benefit from the granting of the application. I applied for a center of the arts and a business incubator. The goal is to create and maintain jobs for artists. One of the means for continued funding would be to provide options for affordable green housing constructed by artists who may also be in need. Um, these are cozy homes, larger than tiny homes, super insulated with solar heating and cooling op options, offsetting some of the additional expenses of for, uh, associated with home ownership. The business incubator could be used for many reasons, including gaming development, technology advancements, other businesses, uh, and providing means for those looking to enter green building while having positive long-term benefits for our environment. While I'm in need of these funds and I do ask they be granted, I am, there is a second reason I'm here and I'd like to speak to you about intellectual property or patents. Um, patents have many uses that can include being licensed to others and other communities to bring re money and resources to the community they're licensed from. They can draw business from other communities to help improve jobs in the local economies. They can be utilized by businesses in a community, current startups, current or startups, as a tool to protect businesses for the best chance of success. Patents can be used for a tool to prevent foreign adversaries from operating on our soil. At least one of my filed inventions can work like a 911 communication and in some cases with 911. Perhaps some would like to ignore the patent system. Um, I've run into many who have and uh, would like someone in another country to source someone from yet another country to work with our sensitive infrastructure. These are just some of the reasons people file for intellectual property protection. When used properly, patent applications may be the only tool you, we, will ever have to prevent access from a corporation that may not have our best interests in mind taking what doesn't belong to them. Patents can even be uh, utilized in a business incubator right here in Oshkosh. They can be utilized for security and saving lives. I'm seeking partnership in regards to my intellectual property so it may benefit the taxpayers. 
I dealt with the patent office for more than 11 years for them only to say my property was pending while never granting it. Then someone else told me it was abandoned. I never abandoned my property. If the community or viewers wish to read it, it's filed under communicating keychain 12381752 and poor man security 61070359. While there are many innovations within the application and especially in the way it's written and the time it was filed, I saw at least 30 innovations I believe to have great value. During these years of correspondence with the Patent Office, I went from being a homeowner and wrongfully terminated from my employment in an attempt to take my property in exchange for labor as a welder, in exchange for compensation. I worked my whole life, had two homes, a retirement plan. I was bullied out of my home by a bank after a good faith effort was made to keep my property that others came in to destroy, making it unrentable. These are just a few of the non-coincidental things that happened, creating my need for affordable housing. When speaking of affordable housing, it should also be a bit more ideal than what it currently is. I'm currently paying rent to live in my vehicle that costs less than 10% of what some of the vehicles in this parking lot cost. I do not have money for this drawn out continued use of funds, and again, I'm asking for ARP funds to be granted at this meeting. In exchange for help with restoration and licensing, I'm willing to share licensable revenue. I believe this would be a sum worthy of your attention. The exact amount will need to be further discussed with me and a license agreement with me would need to be reached. We could talk about specifics and come to an agreement if you, the citizens, are interested. Some of the revenue generated from an agreement, if reached, could be off could be used to offset tax liability of the citizens taxpayers. Imagine taxes going down and not up. Again, this is a sum worthy of your attention. After receiving this help, I would also be able to use some of the licensable revenue to maintain jobs <coughs> for artists. I'm truly hoping ARP funds are decided tonight. If they are not decided tonight, I'm requesting tonight a measure of good faith and the city donate a small piece of property to Mariah's Garden that you are currently selling so that I may at least do some work. The property is located for sale on your website with the 17th Street address. Thank you. Thank you. Next up will be Mr. Michael Patton, followed by uh, Jim Ponzer. Welcome. Thank you, Council. Uh, my name is Michael Patton. I live at 2510 Hamilton Street here in Oshkosh, and I'm a member of the session or governing body at First Presbyterian Church in Oshkosh. Um, uh, we were contacted uh, late last week, uh, early this weekend, uh, about a situation uh, where uh, Esther reached out to us and said there were some unhoused people who were being asked to move from where they were located with the storms coming this weekend. They were looking for uh, a safe place to be relatively dry and was there anything we could do to help. Um, had an impromptu meeting where we agreed that we have a green space, that if they you know, felt that camping in that space temporarily would keep them safe and dry. Uh, we were uh, happy to offer that as a, as a good neighbor faith. Um, come Sunday, we found uh, a person camping there. Uh, since that time, that has grown to uh, a, a series of five tents. Uh, we wanted to make the council and the city aware that we were aware that those people were there. They are our guests, they were invited. It was, it is, and uh, was temporary, uh, and that Esther has been in contact with them since a um, a conversation uh, with the Oshkosh police as well as uh, people here from the city uh, about uh, them not being welcome otherwise in the area. Um, we understand that position. Uh, we are fans of the the presentation about beautifying downtown Oshkosh. We have been in downtown Oshkosh for over 150 years and have no plan of going anywhere. Uh, and so we try to be good neighbors, but good neighbors not just to the people who are here permanently, uh, but for people who do not have a permanent place to be. Uh, and so while we uh, have dealt with the situation of today, this is not going to be a situation that's going to go away anytime soon. We have a, a beautiful new shelter that is already full, uh, as well as other facilities, cots, etc. cetera. Uh, and so I encourage the, the council as they're thinking about downtown development plans and other things to recognize uh, that this is an ongoing problem 
uh, and we would also like to encourage some way that we can better communicate when things such as this are, are going on. As I said, we were aware that this might be happening. We invited them to come, uh, and, and it's a temporary situation. So how could we better communicate with the city that this is going to be happening and why it's going to be happening and for how long? And then how can uh, we make this a, a more pleasant uh, experience for everyone involved while maintaining the, the beauty of downtown Oshkosh and the safety of all of the people who live here, either housed or otherwise. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next up, Mr. Jim Ponzer. If you could come over to this one, sir. Oh. I wouldn't mind. Okay. Thank you. We're gonna make you walk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my, yeah, is my name is, is that Zahn? Yep, okay. you're good. My name is James Ponzer, I live at 402 Baldwin. And I live next to the retention pond that expands from Baldwin to New York. This may seem like a very minute problem to the council, but we don't know where to turn as neighbors. They have been spraying poisons in there, and they wouldn't say what it is, but it's a bright blue, so I'm almost thinking it's copper sulfate. They said it was a herbicide. Um, it's killed the lake fly, yeah, lake flies, <laughs> no problem there. It's killed the, uh, Fireflies at night, the kids don't have them. This is already going on since last year. Um, now we have the birds nesting in there, and two weeks ago, the same company that sprays wanted to set it on fire. I, I, you know, the bird, it just, I would ask, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the council if they can get an ad hoc committee and review the policies of how this is done. I know at one time they had a retention pond council or committee and I guess that got dissolved so I'm asking that we look into this and we don't need the poisons we really don't and if you think about that retention pond they dug that in 2008 because of the amount of flooding 2010 they dug up the streets and put in bigger sewers and drainage <laughs> we don't even get water in the place so I would like you guys just to look at that and have citizen involvement, but the poisons, they, they really have to stop. Thank you. Thank you. I have no one else registered to speak under citizen statements. I do have uh, one other individual registered to speak under a consent agenda, so we'll come up to that in just a second. Uh, next up, consent agenda. I'll take a motion and a second on consent. Will it Actually, and I should have done it already. Uh, I have uh, Mr. Jonathan Youngworth is here registered to speak on uh, Resolution 24-281. This is for the um, uh, special event permit. Welcome. Hey, guys. My name is uh, Jonathan Youngworth. I'm looking for an approval on my special events at the Leech Amphitheater for a music event that I'm planning on running on September 28th. Excellent. All right. Uh, no. Nope. Do you want me to give more uh, details at all? <coughs> up to you. So, yeah, the floor is yours if you'd like it. Uh, yeah, so we've been planning this for about eight months now. Uh, I've been talking really closely with uh, the Parks and Recreation Department on it and also with Sergeant Gogo on the safety plans for everything that we have involved. Uh, we've been reaching out with uh, many different artists and seeing who would be uh, wanting to participate in such an event. Been speaking to many security companies and different other people to make sure that this is an effective event and uh, making sure that we have all the adequate resources for the event from like water, food, uh, <coughs> security. Uh, yeah, we've been planning constantly for this and we just uh, are looking for your approval tonight. And yeah, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Seeing as no other people are registered to speak, I did have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on consent items? I do want to just point out we are approving, I think, uh, five or six folks to various boards and commissions this evening. I want to thank them for their applications. Uh, I'll do it now, and I'll, I may do it again later. But for those uh, who may be interested, we do still have openings on a Board of Review, Board of Zoning Appeals, Long Range Finance. Plan Commission as well as sustainability. So, if there's folks in the uh, in the audience or listening at home that have interest, 
Um, we have some open spots and would love to see your applications. With that, we'll take the roll on consent. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugawar? Aye. Carried six. On to pending ordinances. Ordinance 24 286. This is adoption of an amendment to Chapter 3, Housing of the City of Oshkosh, Comprehensive Plan 2040. Plan Commission recommends approval. Take a motion and a second, please. Move it. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, she'll take the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugawar? Aye. Carried six. Ordinance 24 287 approve request to attach to the city from Town of Algoma, Rural 2, voluntary attachment. Move it. Second. Any discussion? Please state the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Next up, we have new ordinances. Uh, first two, we do not anticipate any action. Ordinance 24-288. This is to amend Chapter 2, Article 2 of the City of Oshkosh Municipal Code pertaining to election and election officials to establish a board of absentee ballot canvassers. So this is a central account location for absentee ballots. I hadn't asked you in advance, but would you mind giving us a 30-second, 60-second hit on um, on this, at least for those who are, are listening at home? I have one question, but I'd, I'd like you to just... Sure. Tell us maybe, what you'd like to do I here. I can answer it before Hopefully. you ask it. Um, we would like to develop a central count location. Uh, there are a couple other municipalities in the um, Winnebago County that have it, um, Fox Crossing and Nina. Um, basically, it is a, another polling location, but it will not see foot traffic. It will handle all the absentee early ballots that we receive during our early absentee voting. Um, and the location that we're going to have it is here at City Hall. We're utilizing these rooms. I have them reserved for the next couple of elections. So I'm um, going to work with facilities and make sure we are good because once we establish this, it will be in place. Um, it'll take the load off a lot of the chairpersons, the poll workers, um, make ballot security a priority too. Um, we won't have to have two people taking ballots out to the location so that they could process it. I think you did answer uh, answer the questions. One uh, one I do have, for those who, uh, ever so often, you know, there's elections around here, for those who care about where those votes came from, how do we, or is there a way to know where those absentee ballots um, would have originally come from? So right now they're taken to their exact polling location and they're counted as part of those locations. Yes. Uh, if they're processed here under the absentee location, those no longer would show up, those votes would no longer show up in their their home locations, is that correct? They will show up oh, in their will? home locations, okay. yes. Great. They are designated, they're, they're marked with, from WISVOTE, when we have our, our labels that we put on them, it does indicate the ward, their address, and that is the, the vote will okay. stay that way. Excellent. Yep. Appreciate it. Uh, no one uh, action anticipated on that this, tonight. Uh, that'll be back at the next meeting. Ordinance 24-289 approves zone change from suburban mixed use district to suburban mixed use district with a planned development overlay for properties located at Jackson Street south of Snell. Plan Commission recommends approval on that one. Again, no action tonight. Uh, next up, Ordinance 24-290. This is to authorize public construction for Lake Butamore Drive development. Phase 1, 3500 block of Lake Butamore Drive. Staff recommends waiving the rules and adopting on the first reading. Is there a motion and a second to waive the rules and adopt? To suspend the rules and uh, adopt on the first reading. Second. Any discussion on waiving the rules? Councilman Wrestling, or it didn't register. But yeah, it's yours if you want it. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Um, I'm a little uneasy on uh, waiving rules. Now we I know we've gone over this pretty extensively and there's no one here tonight um, to speak to it, but I guess just from a staff perspective, is this absolutely necessary that we do this to keep in line with the timelines? 
I mean, it's obviously a substantial project, and I don't want to see anyone have to take on any monetary <laughs> issues uh, if we delay this. I'm going to have Ms. Nyforth give you a little more detail, but <clears throat> if you notice that items 23 through mm -hmm. 29 are right. all related to this, yep. and so it's about it's about yep. it's uh, enabling the developer to get moving on these projects. So that's the the, the sort of the I wouldn't say 30,000, maybe a 5,000 uh, foot view, but I think Ms. Nyforth has more details on the specific reasons. Sir, um, it, below under new resolutions, we do have a mm -hmm. development agreement for the improvements in the public right of way. Um, so typically when we um, have a developer that's going to be installing public improvements in our right of way, um, we have to have all of these items included in there. Um, and so um, the reason why we are asking to adopt on the first reading is like you said, since we are approving the development agreement and other items, um, that it does allow them to start that construction in the right of way and they don't have to wait another two weeks. Couldn't this have been handled? I mean, couldn't this have been turned in earlier so we could have avoided that? Um, the development agreement uh, we've been working with the developer on, um, as they've also been finalizing their um, their CSM and everything. So this is just kind of how we we usually like to have all the items related to the project on one agenda for you to consider. Anything else to add to that? No, I was just I just wanted to make sure that to highlight that we have been working with this developer for several months on getting all of the items in the developer's agreement. Um, unfortunately, as things in the plans change, that changes some of the items in the developer's agreement. So we really needed to get to that final plan stage in order to get the development <coughs> agreement finalized. So it has been uh, something we've been working on very diligently with this developer for several months to get it to this point. And when he says plans change, that's just very slight changes within the right of way. So nothing for the development private site has changed. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? I know we have rules for a reason. Um, I think that's probably one of uh, Council Member Esslinger's um, points he's probably trying to make there. I don't want to speak for him, but um, we try not to do these unless we absolutely have to. Thankfully, these two are only regarding um, its public construction and establishing street grades. Um, the rest of the items are all um, uh, set for normal approvals. So uh, I feel confident in, in uh, waiving the rules and adopting those. So if there's nothing else, if you'll take the vote or the roll on waiving the rules. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Back to ordinance 24-290. I'll take a motion and a second. Move so, it. Second. Discussion on 24-290. Uh, I see none. Please take the roll. <coughs> Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Ordinance 24-291, uh, establish street grades at Lake Butamore Drive, excuse me, Lake Butamore Development, phase one, 3,500 block of Lake Butamore Drive. Staff recommends waiving the rules and adopting on first reading. Move to waive the rules. Second. Any discussion? Please take the roll on waiving the rules. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugawar? Aye. Carried six. Back to ordinance 24-291. Move it. Second. Any discussion on 24-291? I see none. Please take the roll when ready. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Mugawar? Aye. Sorry. Esslinger? <laughs> Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Carried six. Just keeping us on our toes. That's <laughs> <laughs> change is going to go popcorn now? <laughs> I just went at it. <laughs> uh, new resolutions. Resolution 24-292, accept dedication of street right-of-way for Olivia Road. Plan Commission recommends approval. So moved. Second. Discussion. Please take the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Resolution 24-293, approved preliminary plat for the creation of an eight-lot multifamily 
residential subdivision at the west 3500 to 3600 blocks of Lake Butamore Drive, Lake Butamore uh, Development. Plan Commission recommends approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Resolution 24-294, approve initial resolution for special assessments for utilities, sidewalk, grading, and gravel, graveling, concrete paving, terrace trees, and street lighting for Lake Butamore's development, phase one, 3500 block of Lake Butamore Drive, with signed waiver. So moved. Second. Discussion. Please take the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Resolution 24-295, accept and approve waiver of special assessment notice and hearing in connection with improvements. Lake Butamore Development, Phase 1, 3500 block of Lake Butamore Drive. So moved. Second. Discussion. Please take the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Approve final uh, resolution 24296. Approve final resolution for special assessments. Did I just read that one? Nope, you're good. Okay. For utilities, sidewalk, grading, and graveling, concrete paving, terrace trees, and street lighting for Lake Butamore Development Phase 1, 3500 block of Lake Butamore Drive mm -hmm. with signed waiver. Take a motion. Move it. Second. Discussion. I see none. Please take the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flum? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugawawar? Aye. Carried six. And resolution 24-297, approved developer's <coughs> agreement, Lake Butamore Development, phase one, 3500 block of Lake Butamore Drive. So moved. Second. Any discussion on the developer's agreement? I see none. Please take the roll on 24-297. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugawar? Aye. Carried <coughs> six. Resolution 24-298, approve agreement for sale of Northwest Industrial Park Land to Lindy Inc., $561,000. Move it. Second. Any discussion on this? I see none. Please take the roll. Nichols? Aye. Larson? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Flom? Aye. Bulow? Aye. Mugabauer? Aye. Carried six. Resolution 24-299, approved special event, Oshkosh Jazz Festival for Chris Larson to utilize the 400 block of North Main Street for Oshkosh Jazz Festival, August 24th, 2024. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Larson. I just want to thank city staff for moving this out of consent so I could vote present. <laughs> <laughs> and putting my name right there on it so I'd be reminded to vote present. <laughs> How are you voting, Chris? Uh, to, to be determined. Hold on. One second. <laughs> we'll take the roll on 24 299. We'll find out. <laughs> Nichols? Aye. Larson? Present. Esslinger? Aye. <laughs> Flum? Aye. Bulo? Aye. Mugawawar? Aye. Carried five, one present. That was a close one. <laughs> Resolution 24 300, direction to city manager on 2024 property tax levy. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Flom, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, one of the things that does concern me uh, in the long run is when we take a look at uh, moving up to 4%, uh, 3 to 4%, given the tax rises that are going on uh, and just the cost of living and the cost of goods, I want to see if we can do any better. Um, I would personally like to see options, different options uh, from the city manager uh, and the finance director about taking a deeper dive on this year's budget and seeing if we can get a little bit more creative and just uh, instead of not going along with the continual 3 to 4% that we see happening every year. Um, so that is something that I would very much like to see. Uh, in terms of establishing at 4% tonight, uh, 
I would like to be a little bit more creative than just a simple 4%. Um, I'd like to see if we could potentially do 2 3% better than that 4%. Uh, so I understand the, the analogy here and, and the logic, but I would like to see us get a little bit more creative and see if there's anything more that we can do. I understand the cost of governing is just going up as it generally is, but you know, citizens are really feeling the squeeze. So I would like to see us try to do a little bit more uh, in terms of being creative around budgeting. Thank you. Do you want to go ahead first? You can go ahead and then I'll go. Deputy, okay. Deputy Mayor Bilo. All right, sounds good, thank you. Um, actually, and um, uh, not to take away, a, away from anything that um, uh, Council Member Flom just said, but I wanted to take my, a second to, to throw it over to City Manager Roloff just so you could explain your thoughts behind this, what you were looking for, um, bring in Finance Director if you want to, but uh, before we go too deep into it, kind of get uh, from, from your mouth. Yeah, well this is, it, uh, the Mayor and I had a discussion this morning and this was brought up in the wee hours of a very late Council meeting when we were discussing uh, the, the uh, revaluation. This really isn't about the budget as much as it is is about the reval. And then Councilmember Nichols and I had a conversation as well. And I, I think there's some hesitancy to this, and and that's certainly appropriate for the council. Uh, the idea behind this was, if you wanted to provide any assurance that there's this belief that we are going to use some unlimited authority that we supposedly have, which we don't, to take advantage of the fact that our values are going up to increase our levy by some ridiculous amount, this would provide that assurance. Uh, typically, this process is done with the council after probably our first two budget work sessions. We talk about the capital improvement slash debt side of things. That's the uh, workshop that you're going to have in late July. And then in late August, there'll be a similar one on the operational side where we talk about some of the assumptions that are going into it. Uh, for example, one of the ones that I know right now is because is on the personnel side because we've already reached ten, we've already reached agreement with our police union, which pretty much once we've settled with one union, it pretty much kind of establishes the standard for the rest, and that's four and a quarter percent. So uh, four percent uh, when. 75% of our general fund budget is pretty much operations. That's why I went with a 4%. Uh, the council really could do one of several things. Councilmember Nichols suggested just, you know, let's just not take any action on this at all. Um, some of this was in response to reval. And I think we've been very successful in meeting with residents, uh, trying to allay their fears. Part of this, the purpose of this was to allay fears. Um, that's not saying the fears are going away because if your increase in your valuation is greater than the average, yes, you will see an increase in yours, not because of anything council's done, but just on the redistributive effect of what happens with the reval. Um, I am totally comfortable if the council votes this up, votes this down, tables it, uh, and waits until we can uh, give you a little more background in terms of what we're expecting for the coming year. It's gonna be about debt service, it's gonna be about personnel, health insurance, which usually you get about at the, the last meeting in August. So I'm totally comfortable with what council does. I, I suggested this in the wee hours and council member Nichols challenged me, he said, who agreed to this? <laughs> the answer was nobody, but nobody was opposed to it either. So I was just, I'm just gonna put it on to get the discussion out there. Sure. I'm totally comfortable with whatever council decides. So I just want to clarify, this would be serving as kind of your cap, not a target. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I would come with nothing more than this, but throughout the course of the budget work sessions, we're going to kind of get closer to where we think our landing spot will be. And the council has every right to say after a certain point, hey, we got to be careful about this and we want to put a, you know, a, a bigger cap on it. That's entirely within council's purview and I respect that anymore sounds good I'm gonna go and then uh, councilmember Larson after me um, as city manager alluded this came after a lengthy council meeting uh, a couple weeks ago at, towards the tail end of it um, didn't didn't elicit much much comment uh, late into the <coughs> evening Lawrence, maybe, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah I think my my uh, reaction was probably similar to councilmember Nichols when I saw it and like yeah, this isn't a good idea uh, just straight up um, 
for those at home, for those listening, for regarding the why, as, as city manager alluded to, this was tried to. Uh, this was a, a measure to possibly um, calm fears uh, within the public regarding um, the potential for their their tax bills to go up uh, astronomically. Um, it needs to be, and, and, and I want to thank uh, the reporting that has gone on so far. I think there's been some good articles out there uh, trying to help. I think we've been trying to, city staff has been trying to get out the word um, as well on the topic and trying to just clear things up, calm people down a little bit on the topic. Um, but I think it should be it, it just as clear as day. Uh, we are not allowed an unlimited tax levy increase. State law doesn't allow us to do to do that, and so it's just not going to happen. Um, but, you know, 7,500% increase in your value will not equal 7,500% increases in your tax bill. It's not allowed. Um, it'd be my suggestion that we take no action tonight on this. Having gone through, what, six or seven budgets, council is in no way positioned to make a recommendation on what our levy limit or our, our tax increase should be or could be. We, we don't have any information. So it'd be... Um, just throwing a number out there and hoping it sticks, and I don't think that's good policy uh, and good direction making myself. Um, but I'm only one of seven, oh, one of six tonight. Um, but uh, that'd be my suggestion, either to withdraw the, I don't, is it, can we withdraw the motion in second and just leave it? Because I don't want, I also don't want, I don't want to vote on it at all. A withdraw motion just means no action, we move okay. on. Um, that would be my preference um, after Council Member Larson speaks, would be to, if, uh, if it was so entertained, would be to actually just withdraw the motion in second so that it, uh, there was no action taken this evening at all. Uh, Council Member Larson, it's yours. I was just going to echo that. And I appreciate the sentiment very much, City Member. I, I mean, we're, we were all right there with you. I was just going to point out that I think city staff has done a great job alleviating, alleviating some of these fears as well. We've all been asked the same question 100 times as well, and we're all giving the same answer as well. So I, I have faith that we will work towards that collectively as a group. And that we'll get there, and that it's way too soon to do this now for me. So I echo a lot of the same things. But I do appreciate the sentiment to a degree. Councilman Wrestling, I think it's yours. I know yep. your button's not working, but I'm hearing it. Uh, I'm not working either, <laughs> so that makes two. Um, I think this is um, this is really a really a resolution about perception, um, and it's it was drawn out by the perception of residents with their 75 to 100 percent increase in revaluation. <laughs> That their taxes were going to going up a hundred percent. So the city manager, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to weigh the the perceived good and the perceived bad. Uh, a council member could say, well, this is the target that the city manager wants is four percent, or this is we're striving to keep it at four percent, less from four percent. And if you vote no on this, then a really good uh, journalist could write council member and then fill in the blank voted no because he wanted a higher percentage than 4%. So this could run wild, no matter if you vote in favor of this uh, or if you vote no. But the, the reality is the seven of us up here at budget time are the ones that are going to make that determination. And that, I, in, in my, I, this kind of reminds me of um, Mr. Roloff. Uh, the last council we had, we were talking about um, unions and the, the process of going through, um, you know, the, the contracts. And I think it was you, or maybe it was the city attorney, said, what are council members comfortable with as far as percentages going up? And I think we all had a different perception of what, what our maximum is. So, you know, as numbers come rolling in and, you know, we get a little clear indication on our budget, what we need to spend money on. I'm like Councilmember Flom said, um, I'm more on the lower side of this four percent. I mean I, that to me is like no higher. Um, I want to see it lower than that, but again, there's something could happen between now and there now and then where you know our hands are tied and it needs to go up. So uh, I, I appreciate the um, the effort here. Uh, because I think we do need to throw some water on the perception of the the tax the quote tax increases. Uh, so I, I just I'm a little uncomfortable, <laughs> quite frankly, voting yes or no on it. So uh, I think you know, withdrawing it, I think at this time would be the best thing to do. 
Council Member Flom. And I'll just add super quick. I, I do want to agree with the other members here that you know, the city staff has done a good job of allaying those fears uh, about, you know, does a 70% property reassessment mean a 70% increase in property tax rates? That's not the case. Um, how I, I do see the positives with this target setting. I do just think it's a little bit early. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, it's something that I think the public is good to be clued in on. Uh, so I appreciate the effort I do, but I think it's probably a little too early to go in this direction. But thank you. Mr. Mayor, just before the uh, yep. motion is withdrawn, this isn't to influence you any way or another, just to let you know that the commercial valuations are probably going to be going out around uh, June 8th. So we'll be, we will have allayed fears until about June 8th and probably about June 9th. <laughs> you may talk again, but please don't let that influence you. That I just, I'm just using it as a, an opportunity to let you know that, that that's when the commercial assessments are going to be out. Appreciate it. Uh, who was the motioner and second that you have of record? I have you for the motion, but I didn't have the second. Who was the second over here? It was on the side. It was, I think it was me. Yeah. Uh, Would do you two be interested in uh, rescinding your motion and second? Absolutely. Please. Without a motion and second, there's no action on this item. Withdrawn. Excellent. Council discussion, direction to city manager and future agenda items. Uh, <coughs> Council discussion, direction to staff, update on third party review of municipal ordinances for building and zoning codes. Uh, I'm going to turn Ms. over to Nyforth. You go Sorry. right ahead. I didn't have a name, so I didn't know what you <laughs> Nope, no worries. Um, we had this discussion on the April 23rd meeting, and um, I took you know the comments back, talked with staff. And um, I just wanted to provide counselors with some additional information to make sure that we are kind of heading in the right direction and meeting, you know, the needs, you know, that, that you had expressed to us. So um, in the council packet, I do have a memo that just has a background um, specifically focusing on planning and zoning, the codes, you know, that we're required to administer, and then in building inspections, there's multiple chapters within our municipal code that we are required to administer. Um, I wanted to provide information about um, uh, updates that happen on a regular basis. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier today during our housing, or excuse me, our downtown presentation, um, whenever we have like the housing study or downtown plans, uh, we did Jackson Street Corridor, they take a look at our codes. So um, this is a lot of information I didn't share with you that night, um, just because I was more listening um, to what your thoughts were. But I did want to share it with you um, before we would potentially pay a third party or pay somebody to look for something um, that I would just like a little bit more direction on. Um, included in the memo, I did state, you know, that we identified some areas of improvement, staff did. And then I also did include, like, the overall process to obtain plan approvals and building permits within community development. And then it should really be within the whole city. So I did want to share that with you. And then looking ahead to next steps, just try to see if there's additional direction that you would be willing to share if there's specific areas that you think we should be focusing on so we can make sure that we are really you know gathering that information that um, you are wanting to see councilmember nichols followed by councilmember larson thank you uh miss nyfor thank you for putting this together that it's incredibly helpful to understand um, the history and the, and the processes here. It, it won't come as a surprise, I think, to you or City Manager Roloff that, that the one thing that I didn't see in the memo that I think would be incredibly helpful is to understand metrics and data around approvals in the process, failures for inspections, um, numbers of permits that are approved on day one, or how, I guess, the, the time it takes for uh, permit application to inspection requests, things like that, just to see the full data set. And then we can identify together what do we think the data should say. Um, and then if it doesn't say what we think it should say, if, it, if, if perception is correct and that it's difficult to do business with the city, and I think that's really what we're trying to address, if perception's correct, um, then we can improve processes. And I think that we may need the help of a third party to audit those processes and find best practices. Okay. Um, however, on the other side, if the data show that um, perception is wrong, 
And then I think we need to work on a communication strategy to show that the city actually is doing really great things and that we are easier to work with than maybe people perceive. Um, so I think that would be incredibly helpful as an initial step before we go to a third party, to your point. I don't want to spend money uh, if mm -hmm. we don't need to. Um, but I think the data will should drive that. Okay. So thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate that. Councilmember Larson. And I'll, I'll echo lots of that. And th DJ, thanks for putting it so politely. And <coughs> Kelly, I appreciate the history as well. I. To me, the third party portion of this is a jumping off point so we can we can start somewhere and the evaluation of it is something that does happen regularly. I mean, municip municipalities do do this and it is refreshing and it does take a lot of the load off of staff to do that. Whether the metrics and the measurements come before or after that, I think that's really a big part of this. The, the presentation we heard from the fire department ahead of this meeting was a great example. There are KPIs in it, there's a mission statement in it, there's data reporting in it. I think that would be invaluable to either showing that we are or aren't really good at this. It would be great to do that. And nobody's trying to say it's wrong, but it is something that we should look at. And to me, that third party portion was just a jumping off point for the conversation. But this is also really helpful. So whatever, whatever part comes first is really good for me. See, so Major Olaf, you look. Like I, have, I, 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 <laughs> I was going to suggest, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, please go ahead. Because I don't know, if, and I assume you have, but I, I want to make sure. Uh, the latest update to the city strategic plan um, should be coming out. You'll be getting it in June, correct, Mr. Fitzpatrick? All right. You saw him shake his head. <laughs> and that's, Let the and record that's show. Because <laughs> um, I assume I'm, I'm confident they've seen, you know, at least bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, and I, because we haven't just chatted about it, um, to make sure that they see the current data that we are capturing. And if it's mm -hmm. not useful enough, if it's not the right things that, uh, for decision making, that um, you know, time for feedback. And as soon as we see that, so I just wanted—I didn't know what the timing of the latest update. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Um, part of the reason uh, we discussed this report versus something different was because the the title that had been discussed is building and zoning code audit. And I'm, what I'm really hearing, and what I think we figured what you really meant was, we need to take a look at our <coughs> processes and how how efficient we are and, and more about how do we make the process flow better for applicants. It's not the code itself. I, I, I haven't heard any specific, I don't like this code or that code. Most of the codes, like building codes, are governed by statutes or, or some other regulatory agency. The process is not governed by that. And, and that was some of the improvements that I think Ms. Nyforth pointed out. Um, it, it seems like it was just yesterday, and I was talking to Councilmember Nichols and talking about it as if it was yesterday, and it's like, and then Kelly writes, it's been almost 15 years. So we do need to take another look at this just because <coughs> process improvement is about reevaluating constantly how you're doing things. And then is it a communications issue or is it a combination thereof? So um, I, and I think that's kind of what we were expecting to hear because those seem to be it's about the process and everything so we definitely have to work on that uh, and that was some of the feedback we got through to, to the mayor's point through the focus groups those were some of the comments and we're just like you know we got to work on that and we got to work on the perception because sometimes we talk to our colleagues like, oh we're told the same thing our colleagues in other communities so how much of it is built in because we're a regulatory agency I don't think you got a lot of people saying, gosh, I really love the job the IRS is doing. That's just not a reality. And <laughs> I'm getting a couple looks over there. It, but that's, that happens. But on the regulatory side, they, they do have to play the bad guy sometimes. But they also, and I will defend them, they are totally committed to health and safety. That's our number one goal. But can we do it in such a way that just makes the process go easier so that they're not caught up? And, Anybody who comes in for the first time, and we've had a couple conversations about those in the past month. What is routine to us is the absolute first time this person's ever done it. It scares the daylights out of them. And anything we can do to improve that process, I think we're all on board doing. Councilmember Flom. I think for me, this has always been about KPIs and process. You know, there's what we can control uh, within our, our roof, and there's what we can't control, state statute and federal law. 
So if we can do our best to try to figure out what we can do better as a community and with the processes, especially for people who have never applied for a permit before, who have never had one pulled and who are, you know, like you mentioned, probably scared to death when they see all that stuff. So that's what I would like to see come out of this. I think the third party portion is a, is a very important part of that. Um, but I think that's, you know, some good outlines going forward and I appreciate your efforts on this. One thing, I, just as a, a small follow-up, one thing I want to point out, um, staff has to follow the rules. And this isn't for, for the guys and the, the gentlemen sitting up here. This is for those in the, the audience who are listening to the topic. Staff is required to follow the rules. <coughs> we set the rules. We set the play, playing field, and, and they're required to follow that. It's our job to sometimes break the rules or adjust the rules uh, um, um, as needed, as the projects develop, as time goes on, sometimes um, things in the marketplace are moving faster than city can keep up with sometimes, and that's that's just how it works. I, I want to reference, I won't reference the specific development, because I don't want to, to, to bring anything towards that, but I remember a specific development, uh, it was the design standards on the outside of the building, it was the building materials, um, the, the types of materials, and what the classifications were, and um, staff, did what they were supposed to do. Um, that class, that material fell under a, if I remember right, a class four. And um, through discussion with us, discussion with the developer here in this chamber, information being presented, council decided up here that that we felt, that the seven of us felt, it was no longer a class four, that it was class <coughs> one or two, if I remember correctly. Um, we're allowed to do those things, but it was through, you know, through a good process. Um, but unfortunately, you know, staff does have to play the bad guy, as, as city manager alluded to sometimes. Um, but there are avenues that are available to us um, when the when it's right for us to make those adjustments and to give clear direction to staff that it's time for a change, it's time for an update. It's you know, we we see different now, and we'd like you to to do different. So I do. I just wanted to point that out. Um, they've been very receptive to those things, and um, they take our feedback. With it, uh, I know that they. Uh, staff listens. Uh, they listen intently to, to these meetings and the words we use and, and the statements we make and they try to figure out what we want and they're trying to do that all the time. It's not easy. Uh, I know it's not, but uh, I appreciate you guys responding. I like the memo. I like the way you laid it out, the information provided, um, and, and hopefully we've got some clarity coming out of this. So, Councilmember Esslinger, your button's still not working, but the floor <laughs> is yours. Thank you, uh, thank you Mayor. I, I guess I could, from what I hear from people that um, deal with the community development department it's and the mayor's right I mean there are rules and we make those and we can uh, change those but uh, from what I understand a lot of times it's not the rules it's the interpretation of the rules you know like if you have the Supreme Court these are all brilliant uh, Supreme Court justices yet they look at different things and they interpret things differently you have a yes vote or a no vote so I think a lot of the problems that we have are interpretation. So I guess I, I've heard from developers how they're very frustrated with the interpretation of a rule. So I'd, you know, to be fair, I'd like to hear from the staff on, you know, do they feel that in, um, developers are, I don't want to say trying to game the system or trying to, you know, get a leg up or something, but are they being fair? And do you think that they're interpreting things uh, the way that the staff would like them to? I, Obviously, it's not happening, or we wouldn't have the problems. Uh, but just, I guess, if I can get your general thoughts on interpretation of rules. We certainly have situations where um, an architect, a design engineer, a developer will interpret the code, or the building code even, a different way than staff. Um, a lot of times, we try to work together to come up with a compromise um, to kind of meet in the middle or look at different options. So um, it absolutely happens. Interpreting the code, we understand that at not every project fits neatly into our code. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it's more and more as there's new materials and technologies and everything, we un under understand that this is going to be you know, a continuous conversation that we'll have to have, including improvements you know, to include additional um, items into our code. So. Um, it's certainly something that we have a lot of the conversations you know, with developers on if there's a disagreement. Um, but as city manager Roloff said, as we talk with our counterparts in other municipalities, we are not alone. 
uh, we, we have a lot of communication that goes back with a lot of our um, you know co you know colleagues in other communities um, and sometimes it is hard that you know we share news that they might not want to hear um, but something we work hard with staff is okay if, if they can't do it this way let's let's look at a solution to try to do it a different way and that's really what we try to challenge our staff with to how can we still help maybe achieve what they would like to achieve in a different way though the, the only thing I would add is you know related to your question councilmember Esslinger 95 percent of the time there's not even mm -hmm. an issue we're talking about five percent of the time and so you know and you know most of the stuff that you have with the plan or from the plan commission you're voting 7-0 on these things staff is making recommendations when I saw mr. Lyons come around the corner it's like okay there are you know part of our code improvements that I've really been proud of is the um, the we do fewer challenges of our staff decisions go to the Board of Appeals than ever before I mean I we constantly send out monthly Board of Appeals isn't meeting due to lack of items and I'm trying to the right term that you use it, it's it's not variances so mark you got to help me out and coach me through this one but the uh, you know landscaping and yeah our code update when we did the 2017 code update as, as city manager Roloff mentioned there really reset the bar on how development in Oshkosh takes place. Prior zoning, to, zoning code. Zoning code. Yeah, just to get zoning it, code. Yeah. Prior to that 2017 update, the Board of, Amil Board of Appeals was meeting twice a month. People were continuously asking for variances from sections of our code. The last time our board met is over a year ago. They meet maybe once a year. So in large, our code as redesigned has better represented this style of development in our community. We've also, that's where we utilize plan developments for base area modifications, giving council the ability to look at the uniqueness of a project and say, how does this project fit well within our community? Even though it maybe doesn't meet the exact portion of the code, it provides that flexibility to council where they can have that trade off. There's a little give, there's a little take to make a successful project overall. Um, and just to echo what Kelly had said, one thing we do a lot of, especially as planners, is when we have those interpretations that come up or a question is asked, we reach out to peer communities. What is Green Bay doing? Appleton, Nina. Are we the outlier on how we are interpreting something? Or are we in line with how other communities? Um, Mayor, I think, referenced one earlier that we did a lot of that. We reached out and provided counsel. Here's how everyone else treats this. We were kind of in the middle. So where does council want us to take this moving forward to make sure we are interpreting the best for the community? The base standard modifications is the, 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 the term I was looking for, so thanks for, yeah, that has changed dramatically. And I think what I'm hearing from some of the comments is that can we take that same standard that's improved our, our zoning process and planning process a great deal, can we take something like that and figure out a way to apply it so that the, the conflict points are minimized or at least resolved with the staff so that you know the best stuff you ever hear is the stuff you never hear and that's what and I and, and I, I know that's what we need to do so I really appreciate the feedback this a, a, a very good discussion I think it helped Kelly and Mark as well appreciate it excellent um, is there any other dis council discussion or direction to city staff on anything I have nothing else on the agenda otherwise we'll move to future workshop is undergrounding utilities date still to be determined we're contacting the other utilities, the non-WPS utilities, because that's the next step in that process. Well, um, I don't want to go into too much of a discussion because I know that we have nothing to discuss. Um, the one thing, you know, the the biggest thing that we'll need to hear is about costs. I just want to make sure it's clear that when we discuss this, that we should know that during that discussion, you know, here's what this suggestion might cost the city as well as the you know the average you know property owner so I'm just hoping that that's included in your in your presentation material later to be determined uh, next up council member announcements and statements deputy mayor goes first thank you if you'll permit me a couple of minutes I just wanted to share a really cool story and if you won't permit me I'm gonna take it anyway <laughs> um, uh, so I wanted to share this with director night fourth and then I was like wait no I need to tell uh, city manager roll off and then I was like oh I really want to tell mr. Lyons and he just ran out the door so um, <laughs> you'll have to share it but uh, the other day I was at the dog park and I met a young couple with a couple dogs um, that came here to from North Carolina 
um, and uh, to, they both have employment at a couple of our really cool uh, organizations here in town and um, we approved a couple things tonight about the Butamore project and we've taken a lot of tomatoes on that on that project and a lot of people telling us that uh, nobody's gonna live there it's not affordable uh, this couple lives at the wit um, at, you know kind of a comparable kind of a, a apartment and they absolutely love it uh, they moved here with not knowing anybody so the fact that there are amenities there they pointed out the bowling alley uh, allows them to meet new people that they wouldn't have ever met uh, so now this couple moved here to Oshkosh um, and and they're gonna be you know starting a family and and this is now their new home uh, because of uh, that project that that was able to get in and, and someday hopefully that's the Beetlemore project for somebody else um, but the other cool thing that I, I didn't think about but they pointed out to me um, is now they are actively recruiting their friends especially ones that live uh, that work remote out of bigger cities to come and live there because they can get so much more apartment for what they're paying so to me it's not affordable but to them it is it's, it's you know it's great um, and so attracting that kind of workforce to Oshkosh um, you know we, we talk a lot about the need for affordable housing and I, I think everybody up here knows that uh, you know the the population I work with and I'm never gonna stop banging that drum uh, but there needs to be options for everybody and that was just kind of a, a story that I just ran into him at the dog park and it really really was cool that's a cool story thank you for sharing any other council announcements or statements otherwise I have uh, I have one small one um, so this last weekend the Menominee Park Zoo opened um, for the season it's open nine to six daily um, I wanted to remind residents only because with Pratt Trail still closed I don't want people to assume that the, the zoo is closed and uh, had chat with uh, director Maurer um, and just wanted to, to give a free plug to the zoo so uh, a reminder you know eight acres uh, 30 to 50 animals during the season entertains and educates over a hundred thousand visitors per year um, we continue to grow it and improve it um, major enhancements to the permanent exhibits and uh, this all wouldn't um, wouldn't be possible without the um, extremely generous uh, gift and donations uh, basically financial support from the Tom and Tom and Penny Harrenberg uh, for those that don't know the zoo is free of charge for all res uh, for all attendees no matter if you're a resident or not so just want to say thank you to the Harrenbergs and also uh, go go check out the zoo when it's not raining um, it's a it's a great place to, to visit with that if there's no other council member announcements and statements city manager the rest is yours Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, few memos in your agenda packet. One is about the, the routers or antennas for the uh, GO Transit fare system, fare collection system, We're working on that. Uh, we That number got corrected in your package. It was it was in the 30s, now it's down to 25. It wasn't that they cut a deal, it was just a typo, so just full disclosure. Oh, but see, we thought you were like... <laughs> yeah, we just cut, yeah, I looked at it and said, no, this isn't good enough, no. I'd like to tell you that, but that's that wouldn't be fair. Uh, we also have, uh, we're entering into a contract with a recruiting firm because of the challenges of uh, filling vacancies. And so to the degree we can use this specialized firm for some uh, key recruitments, we're doing that. And it's going to be on an as-needed basis type of thing. Uh, and then we have an updated budget preparation calendar. Uh, the one keynote, we do have a fifth Tuesday in July, so we want to take advantage of that. that that'll also give us a little more time with the uh, capital improvements. Uh, so we'll have that for the council. That isn't going to affect the capital improvement approval process because the plan is different from the budget, and the plan needs to get approved by the plan commission, recommended by the plan commission to the council. That's still scheduled for August, so July 30th we'll be in good shape with that. And then outstanding issues are on the agenda, and happy to answer any questions you might have. I see none. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.